Hey there drone fans, Rick here again from Drone Valley. So today's clip is going to focus on how you can take your drone with you on vacation on an airplane and fly safely and with less hassle getting through the airport. I spend an awful lot of time on airplanes with my job, I travel with my family on vacation. So, and you guys, if you've watched my channel for some time, know that I love flying that drone. I'll take it with me anywhere I can. So if I have the opportunity to go to another state or better get another country and put that drone up and capture some beautiful landscape or some hillsides, uh, I'm all in. So that drone is with me more often than not. And and because I take it with me so often, I've learned some tips and tricks of how to get through an airport quickly with the drone with the least amount of hassle. So I thought I get a lot of questions on the YouTube channel and the website about I'm going on vacation. Can I take my drone with me? What do I need to know? Uh, can I check it? Should I carry it on? Are there limitations on what I can bring on board? Um, so I thought, let me do a little research on the internet. I found a bunch of clips out there that are sort of complete, but not quite complete. Maybe they're a little older. Maybe there's confusing information. So I thought I'd put a clip together based on the current FAA regulations and rules, the airlines regulations and rules, and my personal experience with carrying the drone on a plane. And I did this last week. So I, this is very current information. Um, so before I get started, there's a couple of things you want to be aware of. The first thing would be every airline has a little bit of their own flavor of what they'll allow you to bring on the plane, but they're all based on the golden rule put together by the FAA. So the first thing I would suggest is visit the FAA website, and there's a link below that'll take you to what they call their restricted or dangerous goods list. And that list is exactly the things that you're allowed to bring on the plane and not allowed to bring on the plane. Some of those relate to a drone. A lot of them don't have anything to do with a drone. But if you don't fly often enough, that list changes all the time. Always a good idea to review that list to make sure you're not bringing something that's prohibited to the airport and they'll stop you at TSA security. They open up your case. Oh, there's a drone. Let's talk about the drone. So you want to try and make sure you don't bring anything on the prohibited list to the airport so you don't have any hassle there. In addition to that, I would also visit the airlines page because the airlines themselves have a list of prohibited goods. And in some cases, the stuff that's on the FAA list that's permitted, you may actually need permission from the airline to bring it on the plane. It's not often that they do that, but there are a couple items in that list that they need special permission for. You don't want to find that out when you get to the airport. The good news is everything to do with the drone you can bring on the plane. So there are no limitations on the stuff you need with the drone. So I guess the short answer is, can I bring my drone on vacation? The answer is simply, yes, you can. Everything you need to fly that drone, control that drone, and, and enjoy that drone, really, you can bring on that plane. But there are some restrictions and there's some limits to how many of each of the things you can bring on there. And I'll get into that in a second. So print out the FAA list, print out the airlines list, bring those with you to the airport. The reason you want those at the airport is just simply, if a question arises at TSA security or one of the checkpoints, you have the paperwork work right there from the FAA and the airlines. And you can say, look, I'm trying to play by the rules. Here's the FAA regulations. Here's my airline regulations. Everything I've got in this box applies to one of these two regulations. And that's going to shortcut that conversation. It's not like they're going to stop you from going on the plane, but that conversation could be a 15 or 20 minute conversation. You having that paperwork with you shortcuts that conversation. And for me, the stress of having a plane leaving at a specific time and me spending 15 minutes here and 15 minutes there sort of explaining it at various stages through the security uh, checkpoint points, uh, I want to eliminate the, the downtime, if you will. So that paperwork helps an awful lot. So print it out, bring it with you just in case you need it. Honestly, my experience, I fly an awful lot. I've never had to use that paperwork, but it's comforting to know that it's there if I need it in case a conversation breaks out where I can put that in front of them, eliminate a lot of the, you know, the back and forth arguing. The second thing I would recommend is whatever you do, be as inconspicuous as possible when you're traveling with the drone. Now, I'm not saying to be sneaky. I'm not telling you to break any rules or do anything wrong. I'm just saying the, the less attention you can draw to the drone and yourself when you're in an airport, the better. The less questions there's going to be, the less time you've got to sit and talk to somebody or explain something. It just means you're going to get through security a lot quicker. Um, when I travel, I have a case I use for my drone. The drone's in there. My batteries are in there. The cables are in there. I've never had a problem. So when I go to TSA security checkpoint, I put it on the belt. It goes through the x-ray machine. I pick it up at the far end, then I'm off to my gate. So there's never been a hassle. The times that I've seen problems with drones, which again, always get resolved, but they take time to go through that process, are when people are making a big deal out of the drone. They've got it out of the case. Other people are asking questions about it. It's obvious they've got a drone. And again, nothing wrong with bringing your drone through security, but you have to remember the TSA people that are protecting our flights um, really are trained to look for unusual things or situations that are different. The minute you break out a drone in line, that's unusual. It's a novel thing for them to see. A lot of them don't really even know what the rules are maybe in the top of their head of how that drone goes through or how many batteries or what do we do. So there's a conversation that'll ensue and you'll get pulled out a line. Just happened a couple of weeks ago. There was a guy, a couple of people in front of me that had a backpack and I guess he packed all of his drone stuff in the backpack and some clothes and had the drone strapped to the back of the backpack. 
Um, as soon as he got to the checkpoint, they pulled him aside and they wanted to have a long conversation about the drone and the batteries and the blades and all the rest of that stuff. For me, I want to be as under the radar as possible. And again, I'm not breaking any rules, but for me to be sort of out of their line of sight by having it in a case that just goes through the x-ray machine and I walk away is a good thing. So try to be as uh, inconspicuous as possible when you're traveling with the drone. You're just going to get a lot less hassles, um, you know, than you would if you're, you know, trying to be a big shot about the drone and everybody's got to see my drone. All right, so that's the first part. So let's talk about when you get to the airport. Um, there are really three different categories of product that you're going to bring on the plane. The first has to do with your drone. So the airframe, all the accessories that go with that, the blades, anything you need for the drone is really one category. Those are all passive components. The airlines don't care about that. The FAA don't care about that. You can put that in your carry-on luggage. You can put it in your checked on luggage, you're perfectly fine. The second thing that you're bringing on that plane is your controller. Now the controller is a little bit of a, a queasy place for the airlines and the FAA because they're concerned about the batteries, basically. That's really where they have the restrictions. So the light bulb batteries to them are a real concern. The controller has the battery internally and the rule is if it's an internal battery to something that's an assembled unit, you don't have to worry about it. You can check it or you can carry it on with you. I carry all my stuff on with me, but I could easily check that controller in a check, not ba check bag below the plane, but I choose to bring it with me. The real concern is the LiPo batteries themselves. So if you have loose batteries, there are some pretty hard and fast rules about how many you can bring, how big they are, and where they have to be on the airplane. So if you're carrying LiPo batteries or LiPo batteries on the plane, there's three categories of LiPo batteries depending on how much power they can produce. There's 100 watt hours and less, 100 watt hours to 160 watt hours, and 160 and above watt hours. So those three categories pretty much pertain to every type of battery that's out there, and there are restrictions on how many you can bring on the plane. Most drone batteries are well under 100 watt hours. So if I'm looking at the Phantom, I think the Phantom 4 is like 81 watt hours, and the Phantom 3 I think is around 68 watt hours, and they're printed right on the side of the battery. Most modern drone batteries have their power output right on the side of the battery, which is a good thing, because if they're asking you at the checkpoint, you can show them and it's right on there. If it doesn't have that, if you've got an off-brand battery, you've got older batteries, you can always figure out what the watt hours are by using a simple formula. And the formula is the voltage of the battery times the current available at the battery gives you your watt hours. So you can just take the voltage, multiply it times the current, it'll tell you how many watt hours the battery can produce. That may be a bit of a hassle at the checkpoint if it's not printed on there. The voltage and, and current have to be printed on there, but then they have to do the math. So it's good, again, to have that formula with you. But at the end of the day, most of the drones, actually all the drones I've ever flown are well under 100 watt hours. So you're perfectly fine with bringing those on the plane. If you have a battery that's between 100 watt hours and 160 watt hours, you're limited to two by the FAA regulations, but some airlines actually require permission to bring two of them on the plane. So you wanna check that. As a drone operator, you're not gonna to have to deal with that. If you're a photographer, you may have a battery pack that's over 100 watt hours because you're running lights and displays and microphones with it. So with those, you're limited to two and you may need special permission. Over 160 watt hours, you can't bring on the plane. So if you've got a hoverboard or you've got external batteries that are bigger than 160 watt hours, you're not getting on the plane with them. Don't even bring them to the airport. So I guess the short of this is if you're a drone operator, all the batteries you want to bring on the plane, you're fine to bring on. Now, there isn't a limit to how many of those you can bring on as long as they're 100 watt hours or less. But the challenge becomes that's for normal use. If you start bringing in 30 batteries on a plane, they're going to consider that commercial use and they're not going to let you on the plane with it. So I think a good rule of thumb there would be I fly with three or four batteries. Never had a hassle with that. I think you could bring five or six even and they wouldn't give you a hard time. You start approaching 10 or 12 batteries, somebody's gonna start asking questions about why do you need all these batteries? So just be heads up about it. I mean, three or four batteries are plenty to actually fly in any location and I carry a car charger. So when I'm flying, I can be charging another battery. It's not a big deal. So those are your limits as far as the batteries that can go on the plane. A Couple other hard and fast rules. Loose LiPo batteries can never be in check luggage. So I'll say that again, loose LiPo batteries have to go in the compartment with you. They've got to be in your carry-on bags. Uh, the reasons for that are I've talked before about LiPo batteries and how how dangerous they are under certain circumstances, that they have the ability to overheat and actually burst into flames if, uh, if abused. The way that typically happens is from physical damage or if you get them wet or an agitation of a pressure change, like on an airplane, changing altitudes can change the cabin pressure. So if those batteries are in the bottom hold that isn't pressure controlled, they could go through a lot of different pressure changes between the altitudes, taking off, landing, changing different altitudes and approach or, or leaving the airport. So you wanna make sure that when you're on the plane, those batteries come in that compartment with you, because if you're in the passenger compartment, that is absolutely pressure controlled. You're not feeling those, those dramatic changes in pressure that may agitate the battery enough to cause it to overheat. So that's a hard and fast rule. Any loose lipo batteries have to be in that passenger compartment with you, typically in an overhead compartment.
Uh, in addition to that, you've got to protect the batteries. So the batteries themselves should be protected from short circuits, which means if you're carrying like a Phantom 3 or Phantom 4 battery, a piece of electrical tape across the contacts is normally enough. If you're a fan of my channel, you've seen those, those Phantom 4 battery guards. I use those for the Phantom 4. I still put a piece of electrical tape on there to protect them. So once you've protected them from shorts, they have to be individually packaged. So you can't bundle them all together in one big bag. You can use a Ziploc bag to separate, if you've got three batteries, three different bags. Or you can use what I like to use are the LiPo safety bags because that guarantees that it's inside there. It adds protection from damage bouncing around inside the bag. It also guarantees that, heaven forbid, something happens to that battery and starts overheating. Whatever event takes place is contained inside that bag. So just again, to review, 100 watt hours, you can bring as many as you want on the plane within reason. You have to protect them from short. You have to separate them and you have to protect individual batteries. Okay, so that's the physicality of it. The charge on the battery has to be reduced below 30%. They don't want you bringing fully charged batteries on the plane. I made that mistake a couple of times and was warned, but they didn't stop me from getting on the plane. So um, I would recommend you get them down to one or two bars or three bars even just to show that they're not at full charge. And, and the thought there again is, heaven forbid something happens to that battery, the more charge in the battery, the bigger problem it's going to be for them. So they want to sort of have them somewhat discharged so that if something does occur with the battery that's not good, it won't last as long. The last thing I'll say about batteries, and this isn't on their, I don't think this is on their regulations, but this is a good rule of thumb for batteries in general, especially light bulb batteries. If the battery's been damaged, if you see any physical damage in the exterior of the battery, if there are any cracks, um, if there's any bulging at all, if you see any bulging in that battery at all, don't take that battery with you on the plane. Matter of fact, if it's bulging, get rid of that battery and replace it, because that's a pretty good indication that the chemical makeup of that battery is going through some changes that aren't healthy for the battery. So if it's a swollen battery, if it's got you know bulge on one side, do not take that battery on a plane. And I'm saying this as a friend because I fly a lot, so if you're 10 seats behind me and you brought a goofy battery on that plane, you're putting us both at risk, so just be heads up about that. All right, so in addition to that, let me give you the hard and fast rules for carry-on versus uh, checked baggage. So in the carry-on compartment, everything you need to deal with your drone can go in the carry-on compartment. So you can bring your batteries, you can bring your controller, you can bring your drone. All three of those are fine in that carry-on compartment. In the checked baggage compartment, you can bring everything but the battery. So you can put your drone down there with all the accessories and everything you need to fly it, the blades, everything else. You can put your controller down there. You just can't put those loose lipo batteries. So one word of uh, advice there, I used to carry a bag with my luggage in it and a bag with my drone in it and I would check my drone. I'd pull the lipo batteries out and put it in my carry-on bag but I would check the drone because it was a hard case and I thought I'd be protected. Now the TSA guys have the right to inspect any luggage that comes in as checked bags so they would of course open up because it was curious. They'd open it up, they'd see the drone, they'd take the drone out, maybe they'd pull all the cables out, pull everything else out, then try to put it all back in. If they weren't paying attention they didn't know where everything went so at the very least they'd mix stuff up. At the very worst they'd put it back in, close the top and bend the blades. So a couple of times I've, I've gotten it at the destination, open up the case, and I've got bent blades. So now what I do is I check my luggage with my clothes in it, and I carry that bag on the plane with me. That way, nobody has to open it. If they need to open it, I can open it for them, and they can see it. I'm sure that everything's in there, and it's right where I expect it to be. It goes in the overhead compartment above me, and then when I get to the destination, I go down to the baggage carousel and pick up my luggage. I don't care if they go through my clothes, because big deal, I got the shovel clothes. No big deal. So anyway, that, that's just a rule of thumb. Check your clothes, carry on your drone. All right, so finally, the last thing I want to talk about is maybe the carriers that you use. A lot of you guys already have cases, um, and the Phantom 4 comes with a pretty cool case that you can use for carry-on in an airliner, and it's, it's the right size. But if you're buying a case, hard or soft case, you want to make sure that even though you can buy gigantic ones, which carry everything you need, if you're going to do any kind of travel, you want to make sure you get one that will fit in what's a standard overhead compartment. And the, and the airlines publish that, and there's a listing for how big and how wide those can be. Uh, both of the cases I use, my soft one and my hard one, are airline compliant, which means they'll slide into the average overhead. And I may bring the hard case sometimes if I'm going to a location that is um, you know, reasonable, it's not out in the countryside. If I'm going to a location that's a little more of a rough country, whether it's a beach or the mountains or, or someplace in the woods, I'll take my soft bag with me. But either way, both of those carry everything I need. They go right through security. I walk to the gate, put them in the overhead compartment, and I'm good to go. So just a rule of thumb there. All right, so some final thoughts. Um, honestly, you'll find most airlines are pretty consistent in their rules. You'll find that maybe a couple of them have eccentricities and their rules that you have to be aware of, um, but I wouldn't worry so much about that. I would definitely check them before I left. So again, that rule of thumb I talked about in the beginning of the clip where you're checking the FAA website and you're checking the airline's website, do that for the airline you're going to fly just in case they've got kind of squirrely rules that you want to go, but pretty consistent across the domestic flights. All the states that I've flown to in the United States have no problem with you flying into the state with a drone. That isn't true internationally. There are countries that don't allow you to get through customs with a drone without special permission. So if you're flying to 
uh, Virgin Islands or Bahamas, you might be okay. I'm not sure if the rules have changed, but always if you're flying out of country and have to go through customs, even Canada or South America, check the country you're flying to's customs regulations to make sure you don't get the customs, they find the drone, and all of a sudden they're confiscating the drone until you go off and get that special permission. So just a you know smart thing to do is to make sure that when you're flying into a country, you've got the permission to actually use the drone. Um, the last thing I'll say is, that low key approach I talked about in the beginning is really the way to go. So, you know, be as inconspicuous as possible when you're checking in, when you're getting into the plane, when you're putting the stuff up care up top. Nobody really cares that you're traveling. They're looking for the exceptions to the rules. They're looking for people that are making a big deal out of something that's unusual that they've got to investigate. And you have to remember that even if you play by all the rules, the pilot has the ultimate authority to say if you can fly or not. So you could, if you're a big shot with the drone and you give them a hard time and you get on the plane, you're not answering questions fast enough, the pilot could come out and say, I don't want you on this plane. You're unsafe for transport. I don't want you on the plane. You have to leave, find another flight. So again, that staying under the radar and being uh, inconspicuous with the drone is probably the best rule I can give you. And it's, it's served me well all the times that I've flown with it. The last thing I'll say is, this seems complicated, it isn't. It should be a very simple process for you to get on a plane with your drone. I would encourage you at every opportunity when you travel to take your drone with you because you're gonna love taking that out of the case at the location you end up at. Put that thing up in the air and just imagine the vacation photos you take and the video you take with that at that location. So don't hesitate to take it. I know it seems like an extra hassle to drag that thing along, but it is so worth it, I'm here to tell you. All right, so anyway, that's it for this clip. I really appreciate you guys subscribing to the channel. We've had a huge growth in our subscriber base over the last couple of months. That's very encouraging to us. That means to me that we're doing clips that matter to you guys and we'll continue to do those. So please subscribe below if you haven't done that already. Um, tell your friends about it. Leave me comments, good and bad. I'm trying to do the best I can, but keep me honest. So if I'm saying something goofy, let me know and I'll, I'll fix it for the next one. But I just wanted to thank all you guys for subscriptions that you put on the page and for your support up till now. We really enjoy doing these. So as long as you guys continue to find value in them, we'll continue to make them. So thanks again for watching. Have a great afternoon and, uh, and happy droning. Thank mm -hmm. you.